RQD, Rock Quality Designation. Rock Quality Designation was introduced by Jerry in 1964 as an index of assessing rock quality quantitatively. The RQD is a modified person cork recovery that incorporates only sound pieces of core that are 100 mm, 4 inches or greater in length along the core axis. The formula which we are using to find out the RQD of the cores is RQD is equal to sum of core pieces greater than or equal to 10 cm divided by total drill run multiplied by 100. RQD is found to be a practical parameter for core logging, but it is not sufficient on its own to provide an adequate description of rock mass. Methods of finding RQD Number 1. Direct Method For RQD determination, the International Society for Rock Mechanics recommends a core size of at least NX 54.7 mm drilled with double tube core barrel using a diamond bit. Artificial fractures can be identified by close fitting cores and uh, unstand surfaces. All of the artificial fractures should be ignored while counting the core length for RQD. A slow rate of drilling will also give better RQD. The relationship between RQD and the engineering quality of the rock mass, as proposed by Derry 1968, is seen in Table 4.1. The correct procedure for measuring RQD is shown in Figure 4.1. Table 4.1 tells us the correlation between RQD and a rock quality. If we have got RQD less than 25%, then we have to give it the level of very poor rock quality. If we have got 90 to 100% RQD, then we can give it to the excellent rock quality. This is the uh, illustration of how to find out the RQD and the CR. Here you can see the total uh, run of the core is uh, 200 meters, 200 centimeters. And uh, in first we have uh, got RQD is equal to 118 centimeter divided by 200 multiplied by 100. This is the formula to find out RQD. Here we did not include the 38 centimeter uh, of the core because the pieces of the core are less than 10 centimeters. So we are not including uh, the core pieces whose length uh, would be less than 10 centimeters. And the second one is core recovery percentage. We can find out the total uh, uh, recovery of the core is 156 centimeter, including these uh, small pieces of the core. And we will uh, divide it by total runoff run of the core, that is 200 centimeters multiplied by 100. Now we can find the 78% uh, of the core recovery. Second is indirect methods. In indirect method, first one is seismic method. The seismic survey method use, uses the variation of el elastic properties of the strata that affect the velocity of the seismic waves traveling through them, thus providing useful information about the surface strata. This method is relatively cheap and rapid to apply and is helpful when 
stirring a large volume of rock masses. The following information regarding rock masses is obtained from these tests. A. Location and configuration of bedrock and geological structures in the subsurface. B. The effect of discontinuities in rock mass may be estimated by comparing the in-situ compressional wear velocity with laboratory sonic velocity of intact drill core obtained from the same rock mass. The equation is RQD is equal to VF divided by VL whole square multiplied by 100, where VF is in situ compressional wave velocity and VL is compressional wave velocity in intact rock core. Second, in a volumetric joint count, when cores are not available, RQD may be estimated from the number of joints, discontinuities per unit volume, that is JV. A relationship used to convert JV into RQD for clay-free rock masses is RQD is equal to 115 minus 3.3 into JV. The table tells us about the degree of jointing and JV. If we have less than one JV, then we can give it the degree of jointing as very low. And uh, if we have got JV greater than 60, then we can give the rock mass is crushed. Degree of jointing is crushed and so on and so forth. This table tells us about the different terms to describe the main rock mass structures and the block shapes. Number one, polyhedral blocks. Irregular discontinuities without arrangement into distinct sets and of small persistence. Tabular blocks. One dominant set of parallel discontinuities, for example, bedding plans with other non-continuous joints, thickness of blocks much less than length or width. Prismatic blocks. Two dominant sets of discontinuities, approximately orthogonal and a parallel with a third irregular set, thickness of blocks much less than length or width. Number four, equidimensional blocks. Three dominant sets of discontinuities, approximately orthogonal with the occasional irregular joints giving equidimensional blocks. Number fifth, rhomboidal blocks. Three or more dominant mutually oblique sets of joints giving oblique shaped equidimensional blocks. Number six, columnar blocks. Several usually more than three sets of discontinuities parallel joints usually crossed by irregular joints length much greater than other dimension. Application of RQD. RQD has been extensively used in engineering classifications of the rock mass. In addition, RQD has also been used to estimate the deformation modulus of the rock mass. Cording and Derry, 1972 attempted to relate the RQD index to Terzaghi's rock load factor. They found that Terzaghi's rock load theory should be limited to tunnels supported by steel sets, as it does not apply to opening supported by rock balls. Thank you so much.